okay so really sorry about that guys i'll explain what happened in one second Jeez. Uh, so I'm um, super sorry to everybody who has been waiting. We were supposed to be live like 10 minutes ago um, and basically um, got home around 3.30 and um, got home around 3.30 and we're in a, in a new house. So um, like any of the lives that you saw from here were done with my phone internet and any of the uploads i've done since we've moved here were also done with my cell phone internet and as of today we had our router and modem delivered well it was supposed to be like a simple plug and play setup thing and um of course, nothing can go to plan for me. And basically, um, the old owner of the home never canceled his internet with Spectrum. And um, yeah, it created this huge ordeal and I was not able to activate the internet. So basically for the last hour straight, I've been fighting to get the wireless router and the wireless modem to actually give internet. Um, so it is hooked up finally. Um, and finally we should have good quality live streams because the last couple that I did, um, they weren't the best quality and I'm assuming the picture quality wasn't the best for you guys and neither was the audio. Um, so getting off of that, let's look at chat real quick. Um, I have not, I've just taken a peek at both of these, but I haven't done anything other than crack the lid and take a quick look. Uh, Boltraz, yes, late. What is up, Boltraz? Welcome to the stream. Unsubscribed, unfollowed, and blocked. Uh, Dakota, where he says, where's Ryan at? Ryan, where are you at? Uh, I'm back now. Uh, Metal Steve, hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. Spicy Royal Vapor, hello. Toasty Cheesy, hello. Stelios, hello. TT Vape, hello. Kaz, hello. Metal Steve, what's going on, man? Um, Kaz, what is up, brother? I'm going to shoot you a message after this. Um, what are you more hyped about, the Absolute or the Midge? We'll get, in, we'll get into that in one second. Um, I am currently using my 38 unknown tip on top and we are testing the maven rba i will be doing the video on the maven rba what am i more hyped about the absolute or the midge well prior to today i was definitely more hyped about the midge but i was still very very excited about the absolute um the problem i have right now is i won't be able to really use the absolute today and it's unfortunate because as of last night um i broke my mako v3 um so i am sending that in tomorrow and i should have it back by next week so basically, unfortunately, because of that, what I'm going to have to do, because I don't have a lot of, I don't, that's my only squonk mod. I don't, I've just recently got back into squonking. It kind of sucks because I was really excited to use this absolute, but we will look over it. And um, after opening, let me see which one is what real quick. I'm going to save the midge for a second. Okay. This is the midged. So we'll take a look at the absolute first after taking a peek and just putting the absolute in my hand earlier. Um, 
I got a lot more excited for the absolute after seeing how nice it is. And I knew it was going to be nice because the on the OG unknown was amazing, amazing quality. Uh, bull trust. Yes, I have, I have five, 10 mods. Um, but I think this only has a squawk. I'm, I'm pretty certain this only has a squonk pin and the solid pins, um, won't be shipping for a couple more weeks. So, um, we'll just check right now, but, um, pretty sure this doesn't have a solid five ten pin. I think it's only a squonk pin. Okay. So inside you're going to have this nice it looks like they changed the tins that these are like a stainless steel tin instead of the black ones with the og um unknown rba so you got some extra o-rings in here and we have our allen key and extra grub screws here for the deck Uh, yeah, I can use it with the squonk pin on a 510 mod, but then I'm going to be pissing juice down into the 510 of the mod. So um, I'm just going to have to wait until next week. And uh, once I have once I have it in hand next week, then I will go ahead and I'll do another live stream on the absolute with the first build. And um, and then the review will follow a week or so after the first build video. Um, so let me get my fingerprint stains off of it and, uh, oh, wait a second. What? Oh, there's a solid pin in here. Holy shit, Ross. Holy shit. Okay. Um, yes, we can use this. Holy shit. Okay. There's Ross pin is in the baggie. Oh my fucking God. Okay. We are going to be using this. RDA today. Fuck yes. All right. So let me throw a, a battery into this Black Rose Stealth mod. Oh man. I don't have to wait until next week when my Mako comes back. Okay. So here's the beauty ring. And I'm not 100% sure, but um, do all. Ross, do all absolute RDAs come with a solid pin and a squonk pin? And do they all come with the beauty ring? Okay, so they Dane says yes, they all come with a squonk pin and a beauty ring. So that's really nice. Let me grab the Allen key. Let me grab the Allen key out of here. And this is, I'm very excited about this little guy right here. Here's the clear cap for the absolute. Oh, uh, Tony, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to ignore you, Tony. Got an absolute coming soon. I'm very excited for that. Yeah, I, I'm pretty hyped for this guy. So let's just put it on to well we might as well just change the pin really quick hmm. it's like a square a square I'm assuming I can just use a tiny flathead in there all right we're just going to swap the pins super quick and then we'll go over the rda actually we might have to open it up because i think that post came out yep there she is oh wow holy shit the machining okay hang on let me get this let me get this pin in there before i show you guys this damn man uh really quickly we can see the insulator is a black peak nice machining on that black peak insulator look at that look at the machining on that Whew. 
Okay, let me put this post in before I show you guys the whole deck because I want you to get the full effect here. Um, I'm surprised. I can't believe these all come with a solid pin. Um, like the Strybog is one of my more favorite RDAs. Um, that's what I've been using with the Mako V3, and um, the Strybog, the 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 solid pin is an extra purchase. So the fact that you get the solid pin with, you know, this is basically a what I would consider a squonking RDA, but obviously they all can be used in dripping mode. So the fact that it comes with the solid pin is a huge plus. Here is the cap right here. And we got this nice, like what I would call like granny style drip tip. It's not like a low profile, like super low key drip tip. This is a nice, it's not huge, but it's, you know, it's a taller girthy style comfy drip tip everything looks great there so there's the cap just a nice stainless steel clean very clean no branding the only branding is um, on the bottom of the rda and i wouldn't even really say it's like branded it's just i'll show you it's just a serial number and the unknown logo so there's that's pretty much the only logo on the whole thing and then coming to the deck the fact that i'm live streaming this it might not do it justice with the camera quality but uh yeah it looks like a Narati, like the the machining the the the, the machining quality looks like a Narati. Like, look at that thing. Straight like art. And then you can see, so the airflow is right there. And then you got your post and you can see that the post does sink down in here so that your lead, your leg will just like go in the slot. And then when you lock the grub screw down, it won't push up because it has this little ledge. How many absolute RDAs are there in existence now? That would be something Dane or Ross would have to answer. Um, before I throw a coil in this RDA, we are going to pull the midge out and take a look at the midge. And then we will throw bills in both of them. Definitely getting into the next run of Absolute for my icebox. Is that for a, the icebox is a squonker, Kaz? Yo, Ross, Dane, pass the stream. Dane, post the stream in the group if you want. More viewers for our boy. I thought I did share it in the unknown group but there is a chance that i might have forgotten to share it okay so there is there's the absolute and uh we're gonna come right back to this really quickly let's just see that clear cap on there very nice I'm kind of, for RBAs, I really like the clear, like the unknown clear cap is probably my favorite. Um, but for RDAs, this stainless steel, just this like cleanness of this stainless steel finish, it's hard for me to decide which one I like more um, because this one is just so classy. Like when you have a quality machining like this and it's just stainless steel and it's super perfect looking um it's hard for me to pick between like a clear and this but as far as the it, i might go with the clear with this beauty ring on it because the combination of the black beauty ring with the clear cap and then the black tip that will probably be a killer look but let's go ahead let's open up the midge packaging and then we will start throwing builds so um same type of tin packaging here uh just basic you know tin package and unscrew this puppy bam man 
So the only th I haven't even taken this out. I just uh, all I did so far was open this up and take a look at it. So here are the pins. And um, we can see, let me see. I don't know if that's a 3.5. I got to I gotta open the deck up to see if the uh, 3.5 is in it or not. So this is the 1.5 millimeter pin. Uh, all of these pins are coming with it. Um, no extra purchase. So we can see we have a, a 1.5 millimeter pin right here. So the 1.5 millimeter pin. This is the 2.5 millimeter pin, which this is the pin I will put in the 2.5. So I'll put that pin to the side and let's pull this puppy out. And man, I won't have another OG um, unknown RBA in hand for probably about another month or so once my collab um, mod and RBA come in. So in my... Yeah, I probably won't have it by the time I do the review on this, but it would have been nice to have that in hand to show them side by side. But this is so condensed compared to the OG. Like the chimney, uh, where is my um, dope RBA? Here she is. So there's the dope. Wow. Um, yeah. I mean, the midge is like a, a tiny, a, a tiny bit taller. So to take the the OG RBA was a, a hefty size RBA. It had um, a pretty big deck, and it wasn't like big inside. It was fairly condensed after you took the post into consideration and the cotton. Uh, but around the outer diameter with the height and stuff, it took up a fair amount of space in the boro. I want to say it held around four mLs of liquid. Um, the dope is one of the smallest bridges out there. Um, so if you, you can take something like the OG unknown and keep everything pretty much the same for the most part and shrink it down to this size. Um, it says a lot. That's, that's pretty impressive. Um, so that's a 2.5 pin. All right. So you can see how long that chimney is now. Now that uh, we don't have, we have a, a, a shorter RBA. And it says mid right there. You can see that giant wicking port. And we do have that little like step down in the chimney there. The chimney is so long now since it's so condensed. And then on this side, we got the little unknown logo. So you can uh, you can run it with the midge up front or you can run it with the, the unknown logo up front or you can run it in a clear boro and show both sides. Um, and something very nice about this guy is it does not have O-rings. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't even think about the top not having O-rings. Okay. Well, for starters, the typical beautiful bottom of this top piece, the machining is just crazy nice. And, like, the camera doesn't do it justice. But um, with using stream yards and stuff, it the camera quality isn't as good as good. But yeah, that's got some nice, beautiful patterns in it. And the chimney is just uh, threaded on as I would prefer it to be. And um, nice threading. Very smooth threading, just like the last one. Very seamless look once that's threaded all the way down. You can't even tell that it's it splits apart there. So there's the top part. Move this tin stuff out of the way. The cap. Wow. The cap is snug for having no O-ring. Wow. I need to look at this off camera for a second. Um, I'm just trying to see how, how he got that so snug. Wow. It's literally just 
machining tolerances. Wow. I'm curious to know how many of these he threw away because, um, watch. So I'm going to push it down. Oh, didn't do it that time, but it's got a nice click to it. You do want to get it straight. You don't want one side. You don't want it to be cockeyed because, um, you know, if it's cockeyed, it's not going to go down evenly. But, yeah, that's got such a – that's probably the best one. Up until this point, the dope was the best one as far as, um, like, basically clicking into place without an O-ring. Um, this one's better. Like, this one's definitely better. Let's turn it around, see if it makes a difference. Nope, same thing. Um, yeah, this is the best – this is the best one I felt with no O-ring. That's it, without a doubt. And the fact that this part has no O-ring too. Man. That's that's impressive, guys. That's pretty impressive. Man. I I I knew that this was going to come no O-rings. Um, and very early on, I, Ross kind of hinted at this and gave me a few sneak peeks. Um, and he was saying he's trying to do no O-ring. I forgot about this top piece. This top piece is more impressive than the, than the bottom deck. The fact that this is so, it just holds on there without an O-ring and there's not much to it. There, it's just got that little tiny, tiny section to bite. Uh, six. You only threw away six. Six were not up to spec. I, dude, the machine shop you're using is doing phenomenal work then because that's impressive. Uh, let's see something here. Are the RDA and the bridge using the same size screw? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Let me just double check. Yeah, they're using the same size. So, let's uh, grab the RDA. You can see here where the positive insulator is and the positive insulator. These are both using that black peak. Um, it looks like black Delvern. Uh, but it's peak. It's basically the same material. One second. It is the same material that's being used on these black caps, the black peak. Oh, I could have just showed a tip too. Um, same material that's being used on the tips. So everything between products with this line is remaining consistent. Um, that's super nice to see. The insulators are the same material on both atomizers. They were also, it was also the same material on the OG RBA. The black on all of the tips. I have a round slate tip as well. Those are all the black peak. Um, the barrel sections, as I just showed you, the black barrel, um, is black peak. And I would venture to say that this beauty ring is black peak, but I'm not certain of that. I would just say it most likely is black peak as well. Um, let's just see, that's going to look nice together. Yep. He just said it in the chat. So the beauty rings black black peak as well. And I would imagine the tip on this is also black peak. So, you know, it's nice to see that everything's consistent. That's going to be a nice combo right there. That black beauty ring clear cap with the black tip. Yeah, that's what we're going to run with. Took the took the drip tip off of here. You can just see how clean everything is on this sucker. All right. Um, let's start throwing builds and stuff. 
So I got the grub screws backed off on the RBA. We will go ahead. Oh, I do want to see. So it looks like the pin that is in the midge is in fact the 4.0. And then you have the 3.5 inside the packaging here in this little, in, in the little spots here. And then we got the 1.5. And then, like I said, the 2.5, which is what I'll be using. I'll go ahead and I'll just swap that pin out really quick before I forget. I'm going to be throwing this into the, um, and I'm going to be throwing this in the clear, in the clear, uh, not Hussar, Monarchy Boro. Uh, yeah, there's, I'm really excited to use a 2.5 in the unknown because um, 2.5 is my sweet spot. And I used a three on the OG unknown, which didn't bother me, but it's just really cool to be able to use a 2.5 finally on a unknown RBA. Um, also something to note here really quickly. Um, there are, there are, hmm. I guess I'm going to go with a three millimeter inner diameter coil for the RDA and the RBA. Um, there are 0.8 and 1.2 millimeter pins coming for the uh, bridge. So it only comes with a 1.5 as the smallest. So just keep in mind that the MTL guys will be taken care of soon. The... 0.8 and 1.2 millimeter pins will be coming. And I imagine if you have one of the RBAs that it shouldn't be like, it's not going to be like trying to get one of the bridges. It should be fairly easy to, to get the pins. Meaning not as hard as, you know, getting the, RBA or RDA. Anthony Hart, hello. Texas 86, hello. Ross sent me. I don't have either, but I can watch. You damn sure can watch. Dakota Huddleston, I'm really impressed by the tolerances on the midge to fit together that well without the need for O-rings. Yeah, I I am as well. Stelios, my midge will arrive Friday. Hope customs won't slack once again. Really hyped for the 2.5 millimeter pin. Yes, I am excited too. Antonio Vape Traffic, hello, sir. Welcome to the stream. Everybody else, welcome to the stream. I appreciate you all stopping by. I'm not trying to ignore anybody. Um, I'm just pretty excited for this. Um, I've been waiting for this for a while. And, uh, you know, I, I was extremely excited when this package came in today. I opened it up and I was like, God damn, it was well worth the wait. Um, I have to open this post up a little more. I probably should have added another wrap to this coil. It uh, This is only a four and a half wrap. I'm making it look hard. The, the coil is a little small. I should, definitely should have added another wrap. But it's also, it looks much harder because uh, I'm under the camera and the tripod. And yeah, if I wasn't using... The tripod, this build, is pretty easy to install on here. And uh, something I noticed, the grub screws for the coil, um, it's like it turns down by itself. It's like so smooth. It's ridiculous. I can definitely picture Ross yeah, it even, even like tightening it. It's like just so buttery smooth. Damn. So we'll look at our coil position here in a second. Um, I am going to. I am going to uh, push that lead out so I can get a good snip there. And. Let's see. 
Jay Hayes building the narco moment. <laughs> okay, so I didn't notice that at first, but it looked like it was going to be hard to clip your lead. You can see if you look, uh, maybe you can't from this angle, but there's, you can see where that indentation is here. So not only are, if you leave a little bit sticking out, it's not going to touch the cap because you have this couple millimeter where it comes in here. So you want to snip, you know, obviously you want to snip it, but um, if it's coming out just a little bit, it's not going to touch the cap. There's like one little core that I can see. Okay, that side should be good. I'm gonna clip. I'm gonna clip this off the camera real quick. Get this clipped. We are installing um, a quad core alien in the RDA. I really did not think I was going to be able to use this bastard today. But we got a solid pin, so we are good. I'm just uh, dry burning the coil really fast. There's no point in doing it on camera when I can do it quicker and easier in my hand. Spaced it out a little bit. Oh, there are jig rests on it. So I'm assuming I'll just slam it right down to the jig rest. It does seem a little low. Let me look through the airflow. No, it's slamming right into the side of the coil from that position. Let me look. Yeah, I guess. No, yeah, it. Okay, yeah, raise it. Okay, I was going to say, the jig rest seems a little bit low. So I'll use the jig rest to keep it straight, um, and then I'm definitely I'm going to pull it up. I'm just going to center it a little more. Come up a touch more. Lift the coil up to the top of the deck. Top of the coil a little lower than the top of the deck. Oh, okay. Damn. Yeah, I think I'm good right there. I think we're, I think we're spot on. I thought I was going to have to go higher than that, but now that I look, that's just a little bit lower than the top of the top of these posts here. So uh, before we mess with the midge, we're we basically already got this done. So let's just. Uh, Go ahead and throw our pure cotton in it and uh, try it right now. I am hyped to use this. Willow. Willow, what's going on? Yeah, Willow, normally if I see a, a rest as well, I usually think, okay, that's where they intended it, so I'll slam it. And then if I don't enjoy it there, then I'll adjust it. I'm glad I had Ross here because I probably would have tried, tried it on the jig rest. Dull ass scissors. Should see the bottom of the coil through the airflow. Yep. Yep. Okay. Let's see if it's going to beat the Strybog, Voltress says. 
unless I hit this and it's like immediately like, okay, this is better. I would imagine most likely it's going to be need definitely a couple days of usage. Cause uh, I have, you know, I've been using the Strybog, started using the Strybog like three years ago. So I know that thing I like the back of my hand. Nothing like a brand new coil. We are using some of the uh, North End Strawberry Cannoli by FDH. It's so nice to not worry about wicking the once in a while that I, or well, actually for the last couple of weeks, I've been using RDAs a lot. It's just, I broke my squonker and that's why I haven't been squonking in the last couple of days. But yeah, it's been nice to use RDAs again. And how easy it is to pull a wick. Okay. Actually, the mod that we're going to put this on. Uh, uh, do I want to put it on the Black Rose Stealth? Or do I want to put it on a mech? Kind of want to put it on a mech, but just for, you know, first time purposes, we will put it on to the Black Rose Stealth mod. This is going to look really good. Actually, hopefully it reads with the beauty ring on this mod because this mod is weird with the 510. So you can see it. There she is on the Black Rose Stealth. Nope. Yeah, it's not going to read on this freaking mod. Of course. Okay, take the beauty ring off. This mod is different with its little beauty interchangeable beauty rings, so it does uh, it does not read with some things. I'm gonna just lower this to 24 and a half. Let's give it a couple of test draws. All right, let's hit her. Twenty four and a half watts, definitely gonna have to go up from there. We're at thirty watts. Definitely gonna need more power with that four core. So we'll hit thirty four watts. Flavor is very potent. <laughs> Yeah, the flavor is very potent. Oh, I can't wait to get this on a squonker. Dripper up. Yeah, we'll go up to 36. It's a four core alien, so it does need a little more power than the three cores I normally use. You know what? We're going to put it on a mech because this thing, this coil could definitely take some more power. And on the, on an RDA, I definitely need a little more power. So if I could uh, get this fucking trippered on the thread. We are going to build the midge here. Steven, I'll never listen to you again. 
we are we're putting it on a mech mod right now so i don't know um we'll see here so go this way take it off the black rose i wonder if it will read on here with the beauty ring Cannot I I can't get the the five ten to touch on the clutch mech mod either. Okay, so there she is. Uh, no Ross, there's no pin on on this guy. This is a hybrid. It looks so. This is a tiny mod. This clutch is tiny, and it looks freaking tiny. This RDA looks tiny on the clutch. So we'll we'll hit it on this. Should be putting out like 0.48, uh, probably 40 watts, roughly. Oh, I really like that. I really like it. So, with the Naradis. My main problem is um, the airflow. The airflow was just like a rape whistle for me. And I've tried, I've tried so many different coil positions and blah, blah, blah. And like, I've spent hours with a few of the Naradis. And I won't doubt that they give good flavor. But I do think that the Strybog or the Skyfall, for me, a lot of people aren't going to agree with me. And that's fine. You can have your opinion. Um, the... Uh, the NARS give good flavor, but I feel like I get the same flavor from a Skyfall RDA or a Strybog RDA. I got to let my cat out of my office. Um, this is definitely giving me flavor on par with the Strybog, the Skyfall, and the NARS. Um, I think the the airflow is much better on this than any of the NAR Addies. And... Uh, I do think I have the coil just a, the smallest touch closer to one side airflow than the other. So I'm going to even it out a little more. Um, the airflow is pretty smooth. I do think with a little coil adjusting um, that this airflow will smooth out even more. From the look of this style of airflow, it just says whistle to it. But it is, it is much smoother than I was anticipating. It is, the draw itself is extremely buttery smooth when you're drawing on it. It does put out like, you know, like it's not a whistle at all. It, it puts out a high pitched draw noise as you're drawing on it. As I said, I think that will smooth out with some uh, playing with the coil. Um, but it is already very, very smooth airflow. Um, I can tell you right now that I'm going to need to spend some time with this, but this definitely has a shot at, you know, being, being better or as good as the Strybog, in my opinion. Um, I'm not saying for everyone, the Strybog is the best, but for me, the Strybog has been my favorite since 2019 or whenever it came out. This definitely, it might be hitting the notes a little bit better, um, I just got to adjust the coil a little bit. The flavor is immense. It is very good flavor. And once I get it on a squonk mod and I don't have to drip it anymore, uh, it's going to be even more fun to use. But this strawberry cannoli is tasting freaking delicious in here. Just going to fucking throw mad juice down the center there it's got pretty big wells um yeah that you can see down on the side there which once you put the cap on um you know this side will have more of a wall to it but the airflow is way up there so you essentially have like probably five six millimeters where you can just fill it with um juice 
so it can definitely hold a lot of juice for dripping i just dripped a lot down there and i have not hit it yet and i can tell that it can definitely take more let's see what that looks like it's still really not filling in the well it can probably take like three four mls of liquid three mls of liquid down there no problem it, with some of that being absorbed into the cotton obviously Man, this thing has got a lot of flavor. Okay, we're going to get to the midge build right now. Um, the spec of the coil is right here. It is a four core of 31 gauge with a 37 wrap, three millimeter inner diameter, four and a half wrap. It's coming out at about a 0.48. Um, I do think... Like once I get it on a regulator regulated squonker, I'll probably run it more of like around 42 watts roughly. It's probably a little bit less than that on this mech because it is a little bit higher of a build. Okay, now let's move on to the midge. That the absolute is very good. Let me grab a bottle of water really quick and let my cat out of my office. Give me. 15 seconds. All right, come on. You can go. It is cloudy in here. It's so cloudy in here. This RDA is freaking ripping. All right. Yeah, I can definitely. Okay, hang on. Let me put it back on a regulated mod. I can definitely turn this up and it'll, it'll take it no problem because <clears throat> around 40 watts, I can tell I could definitely take more heat. So... Pulling like 10 amps, 5 volts, and the battery's blinking. It doesn't like it. To be honest, I could probably use it like that. It's nice and warm. It's not like overly hot. Wow. Wow flavors coming out even more man that's good let me check the chat really quick i'm not trying to no ignore anybody did i see mark todd in here are you getting the high notes mark todd says mark todd welcome to the stream um i don't see anybody else new steven hello i think i said hi already uh Build spec, we went over that. 60 watts. Running mine at 60, that profile needs a hot vape. I agree. This I do like this profile at a lower wattage, but it's um, the cannoli comes out. Actually, the hotter it gets, the more the cannoli and the... Um, and the, the cannoli and the strawberry kind of morph into each other and become like one flavor. It's, I like it at a cooler wattage and a hotter wattage. All right, so let's get a coil for the midge. We are going to go with a three millimeter inner diameter as well. We're just going to go with a triple core. Doo -doo -doo. Let's see here. Get my build stand. Okay, so there's our midge deck, and it looks, honestly, just looking at it, I think the posts are a little shorter than the OG. Maybe they're a little shorter, but you honestly really can't even tell that there's a difference between the decks. You really see the difference when you look at the cap and how tiny that is. <laughs> Such a condensed little chamber. 
So let's go ahead and drink some <laughs> drink some water. Hang on. And uh, we'll throw a coil in this midge. All right. So we are using a triple 30 with 40 wrap, three millimeter inner diameter. <clears throat> this is a five and a half wrap. I think I'm going to pull a wrap off. Mm, yeah, I'm going to pull a wrap off. I usually run four and a half wraps in my bridges. I should have used a five and a half wrap on the uh, RDA. I should have added a wrap to that coil, but next time I build it, I will. And as you can see, like I'm on camera, so that makes building much harder. But as you can see, that coil just slides right into place and uh, super simple. My right hand is running through the bottom of a tripod, so I'm not able to move my hand how I would normally hold the coil in place. Um, so that's why it looks more difficult than what it should be. And something about the, the OG unknown and the midged, you can see as I crank down that coil, the excess coil that I'm going to clip off turns up like that and that's because on the og and the midged i don't know if you're gonna be able to see this but the bottom of the post the grub screw goes down into the post so the bottom here isn't just flat with the screw coming down and then crushing the coil onto the flat surface and that's what makes the lead want to drive out the side the reason why the leads want to drive out the side when you clamp them down is because it's flat. It's clamping it down into the flat surface. And people said, um, oh, Gerald, what's up? Gerald was one of the people that said um, he would have liked to seen a ledge on the side here. And that was before he had one. Once you have one in hand, you realize you don't need the ledge on the side of this because the way that this post has a hole in the bottom and the grub screw goes down into this instead of smushing down onto a flat surface, the coil sucks down into there instead of wanting to drive out the side once you're, once you're clamping it. So you don't really need a ledge because of that hole in the bottom there. Um, it also, that's why you see that this leg turns upward as I tightened it down. It's because that coil... As you can see, it's got an angle and it's going down and now it's into that post and then it turns back up. So it makes a really good connection um, and it also makes it easier to clamp down your coil because the coil is not trying to spit to the side. It's just sucking into the post. Uh, Gerald, the RDA is really fucking good. I'm going to... I'm going to drip on this RDA again and take a couple more drags. I am going to bring it to like uh, 46 watts. Go 45.5. Yeah, I'm really enjoying vaping this, this RDA. I can't wait until I get my Mako fixed. Whew. Always this type of direct just airflow into the coil has never been my style. It must be the thickness of the, the like the the tunnel in there, or the size of the tunnel. Ross, I'm I'm kind of curious how many different um, spec airflows you tried on this because the way that this airflow is, I have a hard time believing that you just designed it and the first one came out this good. I I feel like you tweaked it a bunch of times to get it to be this good. Kaz, I'm using the strawberry cannoli in here, and it is the best I've tasted it. I can say that with certainty. This is the best that I've tasted the strawberry cannoli. 
Um, the the RDA is banging flavor. Okay, get back to the uh, the bridge here. And the Allen key that comes with the RDA is the perfect size. Um, if you don't have a toolkit with um, correct, like, you know, a, a nice toolkit with Phillips heads and flat heads and grub screw, uh, Allen keys, the one that comes with it is not going to strip it out as long as you don't, you know, treat it crazy. Um, it fits perfectly. Okay. I should have pre-cut this because I mauled up my original. I mauled up my original RBA by doing like so many builds in it and cutting my coil right on the edge. So the next one I do, I'll probably pre-cut it. I basically mauled it up by using the flathead to try to what I'm doing right now but uh yeah this is never going anywhere anyways so I don't really care about um, keeping it in perfect condition for a resale <laughs> okay um, just cutting this one side really quick off camera I need to buy new flush cutters. If anybody has flush cutters that they recommend that you can buy on like Amazon or somewhere online, let me know what they are so I can uh, take a look at them and possibly order them because I definitely need to get some new flush cuts and I need to get some new scissors. I'm definitely getting another pair of Fiskars. <clears throat> Make sure my pin is tight. I do have the 2.5 millimeter pin in here. Oh, God damn it. I got to put a battery in this. Why won't this unscrew? I think I'm going to lower that coil down. And we will be running this. with this beautiful puppy right here. We're gonna put the clear barrel on there. <laughs> Leave the coil height. Would you say that's too low, Ross? Three millimeter inner diameter coil. Would you raise that up? I got it just a hair below the post. If I remember correctly, that's how I ran my OG. I'm excited that uh, internet's finally hooked up here. Yes, you would raise it. All right, I'll bring it up just a hair.
just checking for any hot spots. I do want to put this cap on and make sure I uh, make sure we're not touching on the edge here. I think we're clear. <clears throat> Get some straight braid eyebrow eyebrow slash nail. They cut close as fuck. For lead clipping or for cotton cutting, Stelios. Stelios. I'm sorry. I'm terrible at reading names and pronouncing names. All right. And the clear barrel is not as tight as the SS due to the plastic on the metal complexities, but we're working on making a tighter fit. Tighter fit like the SS for this next batch. This one seems great. This one goes on there, no problem. And it definitely has some tight... Um, yeah, it's not as tight as the stainless steel. I wouldn't expect it to be. But it, it definitely is not loose on there or anything. It seems perfect. But yeah, I get what you're saying. The stainless steel seems a little tighter. But in my opinion, um, the, the plastic still seems fine. All right. Oh, it's so much easier with this, with the no O-ring thing. It's so much easier when it's all dry to just put your cap on and make some cuts. Um, when you have dry O-rings, it's, it's hard to, you know, get your cap on and make some quick cutting um man it's so much nicer to to have the no o-rings if you just took the og and and released it in a version like 1.2 with no o-rings i think that itself would have been a large upgrade um but to have this tiny, condensed, little fucking, damn it, um, unknown bridge with the no oil rings is just like such an, what an upgrade of an RBA. I, I honestly wouldn't even expected that the OG RBA could have been manipulated that much to be better. Um, but this fucker is, I mean, I haven't used it yet, but. It's pretty clear by looking at it how it's going to be. I'm going to juice this stuff up real quick. Yeah, you know what? We might as well use the strawberry cannoli in this too, and uh, we'll compare. We'll compare the two. So something to mention with the pure cotton is um, it does take a little bit longer to uh, absorb the juice, um, like to to prime it initially. But once you get it primed, it is very fast absorbing cotton. We have uh, pure cotton in stock right now on the shelf, vapenart.com. I don't think I'm supposed to say stuff like that, but whatever. Um, it is what it is. Yeah, so if you're looking to try this pure cotton out, you can go pick it up right now there.
this cotton does expand a little bit after it's been juiced up. So that's why I am juicing it up before um, and, and making some adjustments after I juice it up. You will get the full wicking tutorial when I do the video on this. So I know you're not seeing everything right now. Um, once I do my full review, we will have the wicking tutorial. Because the, you know, I'm probably, uh, I haven't developed a method on how I wick this as of yet. Even though it's pretty much the same as the unknown. Put the chimney in the boral first, then the deck and barrel together. Okay. All right. I got you. All right. I think we're good. Okay, so we got, put the chimney in the boro first, then the deck and the barrel together, then press together. Okay. So I'm assuming you mean like this. And now... Unscrew this. You, you have, you have as many people watching right now as trucking had full views in last night. <laughs> Herb. Okay. Boom. Okay, let me uh, just get my glass juiced up. And we're running that full ice clean, clear boro with that clear. Let me take a couple more hits off this RDA. This RDA is banging. Steven, that's your best friend. You scammed him. I just got to juice up my gasket real quick because this, uh, this boro is dry. And that's one of the biggest things with, uh, with these, uh, Monarchy boros is you got to juice that gasket every time. Otherwise, it's going to be tight. Just got to clean off all the juice now. Trucking made Ryan, trucking made Ryan and myself. We'd be doing nothing without the uncomprehensible uncompreh solid rock that is trucking vapes. Oh yeah, look at that fucker. My cotton is not the cleanest. Um, I could have done a cleaner wick job, but I was just trying to get it done real quick. So let's fill her up. Bowls. Oh yeah, she holds some liquid. She holds some liquid. Juice on my fingers. Wow. Look at that shit. So 
That's fucking sexy. The new unknown lineup right there. It's fucking putting bangers out. Okay. Uh, what mod do we want to throw this in? Well, once my uh, once my uh, unknown collab bull rat gets here, then it will definitely be living in my unknown collab bull rat. But for today, we will put it in the C bot. The purple thirty eight. God damn it, guys! You don't want the the blue C bot. All right, just vape it already. It's going in the C-Bot. Yeah, you're right. It's This live's getting too long. What'd I do with my other unknown whistle tip? There she is. Looking damn good in there. So tiny. Fuck, the thing is cute. Okay. Power, 24 watts to start. And no, we're not going to 60, Steven. Oh, an unknown with a 2.5 millimeter pin. Oh, I missed that unknown draw. All right, let's turn the waters up. We'll go up to 28. Man, it's dense. Not even using the mod to his full capacity. Come on. You use DNA 250Cs at 250 watts. Um, let's do... We're going to do airflow draw comparison. So I'll draw on the Mavin first, right into the mic. That was the Mavin, and now this is the unknown. You probably can't tell the difference in the mic. To be honest, uh, the Mavin is very smooth airflow. Um, but as always, the unknown is buttery smooth. Very good. We're not going to get into too much talking about it because um, I do have to save some stuff for the review and I'll use it. Uh, I'll use it for about a week or so, and then we'll get into the video. But this RDA is drawing me back to use it. I really, really, really like this RDA. Yeah. So there it is. Um, anybody who tuned in towards the end, um, <clears throat> obviously you can rewind and you can uh, catch everything back that we went over. Um, yeah. Um. 60, oh my God. No, I'm not doing 60 watts. I'm not doing, not doing it. We did it for the RDA. That, that, that's all you get this time. Last time you made me burn my cotton out and all this shit. <clears throat> um, seems like you like the RDA more than the midge. I wouldn't say that. Um, what I would say is I just really, really, really like this RDA. Um, <clears throat> and to be honest, I didn't expect... I knew it was going to be a flavor banger because I didn't think Ross would put something out that didn't have amazing flavor. But 
um, yeah, it definitely surpassed my expectations. I think the reason why it comes off that I'm liking the RDA more is because I had my expectations for this were through the moon, um, like best RBA expectations. Um, and I'm not disappointed. It's very good. However, the expectations I had for the RDA was that, yeah, it would have good flavor. I was a little skeptical about the airflow because I never have been a fan of this style of airflow RDA. Um, so I think that's why um, it's coming off as I like the RDA more is because my expectations for the RBA were through the moon. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll get into a full review next week on the product. So I won't talk about too much, but um, the my expectations were surpassed on the RDA to say the least. And we'll just leave it at that. I'll use it for some time and then, you know, we'll do a video on the RDA as well. But, um, you're really, you're going to see me using this RDA a lot. And I'm just going to say right now, I've seen a handful of people list the RDA, like after having it for a day or two days, and they'll say like it wasn't their style or whatever. If you're an RDA user, I don't know how that happened. Um, because this thing is, is very good. And I've already given away too much. Like the, now you already know what I'm going to say in my freaking review. So, um, yeah, I won't, I'm not going to continue talking because I'm not going to have anything left to talk about for the videos. Let me put some stuff away here. Make sure I don't lose that squonk pin. Um, those O-rings are for the RDA. Those O-rings are also for the RDA. <clears throat> they just wanted to flip it. <laughs> uh, Damn it, Steven. Next time trucking goes live, I'm shooting you a link. You should come with chat, cook some. <laughs> Steven, I got you next time. Uh, yeah, for the RDA, I mean, if we were in a... Turn the cap. Turn the cap. Um, do you mean like cut down the airflow? Or what do you mean by turn the cap, Ross? Like cut it down a little bit. Let me see here. No, if you want less airflow. Oh, oh, okay. All right. I thought, gotcha. Yeah, I think it's wide open. It's spot on I just redripped on it um yeah I mean I think if we were in a, a squonking slash RDA market I think this RDA would definitely be going for four or five hundred dollars on the on the resale market the only problem is nobody is using RDAs um it, I was impressed to see Ross sell all the RDAs he did that just kind of speaks on what he's doing because, um, you know, nobody's selling RDAs. They're, they're RDAs aren't selling like that's, I mean, they are to some, some people are getting back into it, but, um, it's just not on the same level right now that Boro is. And I'm not saying it won't come back at some point, but as of right now, you know, the secondhand market for squonking just really isn't there. Um, but yeah, if you're an RDA guy, I don't see how you would sell this RDA or not like it. I'm just uh, putting all the caps back and such. Put that in there. All right. Boro is king now. Yeah, I... Boro has really taken over. You know, we've always went through trends in the past, but I don't think we went through a trend that was as big as Boro is. Um, Boro just became like, it just engulfed everything. And I don't, you know, I could be wrong. I just don't see 
anything else taking over like as much as Mark Todd would have liked this to happen, I don't see anything else taking over the market um, how Boro has. Um, you know, and I could be wrong because I also didn't think squonking would come back the way it did. Um, but it has come back to some capacity. Um, it just hasn't taken the market. Boro definitely still holds the overall market. But uh, the fact that the RDA is still is the the unknown rda is selling at rrp after people have purchased it and they decide to resell it um says a lot about it because there's no other rdas right now that you can purchase and resell it for the rrp that you paid um Says that people just like his brand. They'll buy his RDA. Says a lot, really. People dig his work. Yeah, exactly. It's the year of squonk. Only Nardas and Skyfalls have value nowadays. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I just don't get how people put out trash. Not our style. If it isn't good, going right in the trash. Yeah, uh, it seems like people have no... Um, What's uh, why am I not drawing a blank trying to say this very common word? Uh, pride. <laughs> People don't have pride um, these days. You know, they'll get into something, and I think in the be I think in the beginning their intentions mean well, and they think, okay, I'm designing a product that's going to be a banger. But they get that first proto, and they're like, "Yep, it's done." And damn well they know in their head, like, okay, this could have been better, or this isn't good about it or the draw is messed up or the flavor isn't that good and damn well they know when they try it and shame on them for not trying to make it better and change what isn't right it seems like that we've reached a place of they don't want to invest any more money and they just want to get it out on the market and recoup their funds and make as much money as they can and then that's it that's all they care about and that hurts them in the long run because uh, like your first product, Ross, that came out, the unknown RBA, it, it came perfect. The thing was perfect. Everything about it, the flavor, the draw, the build quality, the customer service. Um, and that's what drove people to your next products. So I don't understand how people think they're going to have longevity if they just dump a product on the market without making it the best possible product they can. People aren't going to come back. There's plenty of brands that I was excited for a product and it didn't meet the expectation or even come close to my expectation. And when they came out with another product, I didn't care for it. I didn't even care to look at it. It might have looked interesting, but I didn't want it because of how how my taste was off the last product. The quality of work on other products allows you to trust that you're going to get something that performs great regardless of what the device is. I agree, Dakota. Um, and Unknown is Unknown and VWM are probably the only two companies that I'll take something out of the package and use it um, without washing it. That says a lot. The namaste. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> I think he thought he was going to freaking take over the market with that thing. Hobbyists always shuffle back and forth right now. World went pod. Us hobbyists won't be caught dead with a, with a pod, so it forced us to the AOI borough market. I think it's more than that. I think it's the custom ability of boro mods and bridges and boros and the tips and, you know, panels. And whereas like squonking, it's like, okay, you can change the cap, you can change the beauty ring and the mod, but there's no like fine detail adjusting like there is in boro. And there's just something about having a compact all in one setup. Yeah. As Mar Mark, as I said, squonking is dead. Get over it already. <laughs> Uh, at this point, I'd give 50 for the namaste. I'd rather break the namaste on, on live stream than give it to somebody for $50. Maybe once they get the prototype, the cost is too much to continue testing different things, so they need the money back. Yes, yeah, Stephen, most likely that's um, that's what that's that's probably half of it right there, Stephen. It's not the same with Ross. We all knew him before Unknown came around. 
Yeah, I, I agree with that. Ross pours his heart into his brand. You see it. You see it in how the products come out on the market. Yep, he hand washes everything. Every single piece of this RBA and the RDA, obviously, but every single piece, the deck, the post, the insulator, the cap, the extra caps, the top piece to the cap, the chimney, um, every single piece is, is hand washed. He's got Chino in hand in, in shackles in his basement. <laughs> Dozer, what's going on, man? You just came at the end of the stream. I'm about to get out of here, but if you want to catch it, you can you can replay the video. So when are you gonna post the Namaste Break Live? No, I'm not gonna do it. I'm just I'm just being sarcastic. Also, my phone's about to die, so I really do have to end it here in a minute. Um, yeah. I'm going to leave any type of drama in the past and not can not rehash it and try to continue old bullshit. Citrus soap for the win. Dozer, what's going on? Oh, that's the secret right there, Stude, the soft box lighting. That's how you get good quality. Look at the difference when I turn off the soft boxes. Um I used to run a mirrorless Canon camera with a very expensive lens. I spent like $600 on a lens and like $800 on the camera. And um, uh, the softbox lighting cost me probably 150 bucks roughly. Um, the I then got an iPhone 13 Pro Max, which has a very nice 4K camera on it. And I just decided to test and do a video with the phone camera and with the lighting, the studio lighting, <clears throat> the quality, you could not notice a difference in filming reviews, you know, stationary, not moving, good studio lighting. You couldn't notice a difference in the filming. So now I just use my iPhone 13. And as long as you have good lighting, uh, you're good. So, yeah. That's all I got for you guys today. We will have the uh, the full reviews on both of these products coming down the pipeline to the channel here. Um, in the next two weeks, I should have both of them posted. Um, I'm not sure which one I'm going to post first yet. I was about to say I'll post a poll in the Copa and see what people want to see first. But I already know everyone's going to vote for the Midge. So I guess that's not really a fair vote. Um, so, uh, maybe I'll just make it a surprise and I'll post one first without, without telling people what's coming first. Um, so yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. We're at 90 minutes now, so I'm going to get out of here and, and, uh, relax. I've been working all day and came home, showered, hooked up the internet and did this. Um, so yeah, we will see you guys. Um, on the next video, there might be a live stream in the next few days. Who knows? Maybe I'll do one this weekend. Um, but yeah, join the Copa and you can see all the hand checks of new products coming in that I'm using and um, updates on how I feel about products in between reviews. Um, yeah. So that's all we have for you guys today. Jason Clouds and Flavor, what's going on, man? Dakota, have a great night. Ross, thank you very much, Ross. Um yeah, we are going to do an interview on here. Um, I know Ross is super busy, but I would like to jump on here and do a live stream in the next, I don't know, within a month or so, hopefully, and kind of pick Ross's brain about the brand and stuff. I did kind of touch base with him about that a, a month or so ago, but we're both super busy, so we haven't made it happen as of yet. But um, with due time, we'll probably make that happen. So um, everybody, thank you for stopping by. And uh, everybody have a great rest of your week. And we will have um, another review posted up on the channel come this weekend and possibly another live stream. Um, yeah, go check out uh, JMA Liquids. Go check out FDH Liquids. Check out Nick House, their coils. Um, obviously, anybody who's looking for the unknown knows where they can get that. Um, if they're in the group or not. You know, that's just a, uh, a battle you're going to have to to fight to get in there. Not not literally, but, you know, there's a wait list and you got to have an established profile and all sorts of, you know, the normal stuff with with Facebook groups. So, 
Um, we'll see you guys on the next one and everybody have a great night.